Ruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Um, this week's topic <coughs> is uh, is going to be called 100 Blessings Daily. Uh, the Talmud in Menachos in 43b tells us that a person should recite a minimum of 100 blessings to God Almighty every day. But before we discuss this requirement, let's first understand a little bit about what a bracha, what a blessing is really about. In uh, reality, there's only one blessing <clears throat> that we have that is Torahic. It is called the grace after meal or the birchat hamazon. The Torah tells us in the book of Devarim in the portion of Vast uh, Hanan, chapter 8, verse 10, the achalta v'savata u'beirakta z'hashem alokecha that when you eat and you're sated, then what you should do is bless the Lord your God. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the sages learn out from the wording of this verse that when we eat a meal, which they interpret to mean eating bread, the staple of life, then one should thank God for the meal. Again, say the birchat mazon, or say grace. Now, the logic is really very simple. Imagine, if you would, if there you were the richest and smartest person in the world, a self-made man. There would be nothing for your family or your friends that they could give you as a present. Anything you wanted, you already own. But if you were so smart that you were able to reach this level, you would also realize that, it is it, that as important as it is to give to others, it is just as important to allow others to give to you. So what you might do is leave out something that you would like but don't have and intimate to your family and friends that you enjoy receiving that gift. And that way they would have an opportunity to show their love and appreciation to you and you also would enjoy their effort in trying to make you happy. So from this verse the rabbis have ascertained that if God wants us to thank him for a meal which includes bread, he has intimated that he would certainly appreciate it if we would also thank him for anything that we eat. And in addition, if God wants us to say thank you, he would most definitely also appreciate it if we would first ask him for permission before we put anything in our mouth. Please. Now, everything in creation belongs to God Almighty. So what makes something ours? when we make a bracha, we make a blessing. So now we know why we make brachot, blessings. But again, the question becomes, why do we have to make a hundred blessings every day? So the Talmud of Menachos 43b quotes a brisa that states, Remeyer used to say that a person is obligated to say 100 blessings every day, as a verse in Devarim in the portion of Akev, chapter 10, verse number 12 states, the Ata Yisrael, Ma Hashem Elokech Hashem Me Me Imcha Me Imach. Now Israel, what does God, your God, Hashem, your God, ask of you? And the word Ma, what, may also be read as if it was pronounced Mea. The word Mea again, the word Ma means what? The word Mea means a hundred. So the verse can be understood as saying, Now Israel. Instead of what, but a hundred blessings is what Hashem, your God, asks of you. Now, an interesting fact, to, in addition to this, is this verse that I just quoted. In verse uh, number 12 in chapter 12, 10, has 99 letters in the verse. And if you add the olive to the word ma, what, making it mea, a hundred, then there are exactly a hundred letters in the verse. Again, nothing is an accident. The verse continues and answers the question. Again, what does God expect of you? Only to revere Hashem your God. Which means, based on the interpretation of the morale of Prague, that it is man's primary duty to reverently recognize the source of his being. One accomplishes this by reciting blessings with intent and careful attention to their meaning a word called kavana in Hebrew. Repeating this exercise 100 times a day causes a person to attain true reverence of his maker. The Talmud in Chagiga 9b states 
that one's Torah learning should be reviewed 100 times. Again, we're talking about a time when all printed word was done on parchment. So books were very un hard to come by. So the only way when you would learn something, you repeat a hundred times to make sure that you remembered it. This was standard. In fact, interestingly enough, the uh, Gemara praises a person who learns at 101. One more. The power of one. It's amazing what it can do. There is also a law that if during the summer months, from the Musaf Amida of the first day of Pesach, through the morning Amida of Shemini and Cheris, that if one mistakenly said Mashiva Ruach Umarad Ageshem, who brings the rain, but brings the wind and then brings the rain, the blessing must be repeated from the beginning. <clears throat> if one has said the blessing a hundred times, then it is assumed that he has said the prayer correctly and does not have to repeat the Amida. However, if one has not said the insertion a hundred times, <clears throat> then it is assumed the one said the insert that he was still accustomed to say, and that would, that would then be obligated to repeat the Amida, the standing prayer. Now, the rabbinic enactment originated with King David, as this is alluded to by the verse in Shmuel Beis 23.1. It says, Noom hagever he come, all, who come out, pardon me, and the words of a man established on high. Now the word al, or all, has a numerical value, ayin, 70, lamed, 30, a numerical value of 100, alluding to the fact that David Amela, King David, established the 100 blessing requirements. Why? So the story is related in Shmuel Beis, in the second Shmuel, that at one point during the lifetime of David Amela, there were 100 Jews that were dying every day for an unknown reason. So he investigated and concluded through the Holy Spirit, through Navua, that rested upon him, that the antidote to this plague was the recital of 100 blessings each day. And he instituted this as a law. And amazingly, the deaths in Israel stopped. Now, it is noteworthy that the very reason that sages instituted the great number of blessings of the morning, what we call Birchat HaShachar, was so that people could attain the quota of 100 blessings daily without much difficulty based on a tour. Now the number 100 is a symbol of something that is all-encompassing. It is commonplace to evaluate all sorts of matters by making them out of a base of 100. The highest level is 100%. Percent is a word from the Latin root meaning out of 100. This is considered to be the sum total of everything. <clears throat> now these hundred blessings correspond to the hundred gates in the higher world. Each of these gates represent the passage through which blessings would be channeled. Now we know that Yitzchak, our father, was born to Abraham when he was 100 years old. Yitzchak went to live in the land of the Pelishtim, the Philistines, during a severe famine in the land of Canaan. Even during that famine, his fields produced 100-fold of crops. And the description of his bounty was described in the verse as mea she'arim, 100-fold or gates. All 100, 100 heavenly gates were opened and were used by Yitzchak, our father, who benefited from this blessing on earth. Now, these 100 blessings recited daily were also a protection against the 98 curses that were stated by Moshe in the book of Devarim in the portion of Kisavo, chapter 28, verses 15 through 68. These 98 curses were stated explicitly. But in the next portion, in the Tzavim, Rashi mentions another two curses that were alluded to but not described. So again, we have a total of 100 tochachot, admonitions, or some people call them curses. And may God bless us through these 100 daily blessings that we say daily. And with that, may we merit the coming of Mashiach Sikenu quickly and in our time. Now, i just like a minute. If you see in front of the podium here, there is an email address. 
Uh, that is my email address. If you have any questions uh, or would like to talk to me about any topic, again, please contact me through that email address. And also, we've done about 140 lectures here. Um, we're running kind of tight on what to speak about. If there's something that you have in mind, any problem, any difficulty, any question on Torah that you have, please email me at this address and we'll see if we cannot answer your question. God bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for coming.